raised the question of, about what is to be done as Carly raised the same question. You have a, your generation has a very special responsibility because we are now facing a history that has never, has never existed before. We can argue that feudalism is rational. You can argue that slavery is rational. But now these turkeys are being euphemistic. They have released forces they cannot control. Cancer is epidemic. 25% of the coral reefs are dead now. If the coral reefs die, the sea will die. If the sea dies, human beings, the planet will die. The, that day raises the question, what kind of politics is necessary to deal with these idiots? It's, because the people who are controlling this country are not only corrupt and racist, some of them are, are lunatics. Mm -hmm. And that's new. So I want to answer Carly's question about what is to be done. Racism is the lifeblood of this country. Mm -hmm. When I raised the question about the slave owners, the South rule, they never told you. Things are never contextualized for you to understand what is going on. You hear about Michael Dunn and, and, and Zimmerman. How many, how many black people have been killed by standing the ground? How many white people? What is the context? It is selective discrimination. It's how the laws are used, as Malcolm said, the laws, whatever the white man says it is. Mm. But check this. Mm. The South rules the country in the antebellum period, and when it can no longer do, do so. You ever heard of the federal ratio? You know what the federal ratio is? What it was? In the you recall that slavery was constitutionally sanctioned. Mm -hmm. Slave owners ran the damn country, and they gave to sla every slave owner received three-fifths of a vote for every black person whom he owned. And that's how the South ruled the country. When the demographics went against them, beginning in the 1850s, there were 20 million white people given the European uh, immigration to this country in the 1840s. There were 20 million white people in the North and there were 12 million people in the South, 8 million whites and 4 million blacks, Africans and African descended persons. That no longer gave them the demographics they needed to control, and so they seceded and started the Civil War. The Union is losing the war, so they have to have the Emancipation. The Emancipation Proclamation is an act of military necessity. Lincoln will admit without the black troops that have lost the damn war. And therefore, because Constitution, the slavery is constitutional, they must pass the 13th Amendment. The South, Johnson pardons the South, they come back, they bring back into the Congress Alexander Stevens, the Vice President of the Confederacy, you know, 10 Confederate generals, and eight, a zillion Confederate congressmen. The Republicans are now facing the possibility of having won the war and about to lose the damn control of the government again. So now they must pass the 14th Amendment. They must now make, give black people the right to vote. Black men in the South. A million and a half people are registered, 800,000 whites, 700,000 blacks. And without the black vote, the Republicans would not have won the 1868 election. But what is the response? Where's Peter? Raise your hand. What are we studying now? We're studying what happened, which is also not in history. What happened is the South murdered thousands of black people. The last black Republican congressman was a man named George White from North Carolina who put forward the first anti-lynching bill. He said that 50,000 of my race have been killed from 1865 to 1900. Peter has validated 22,000 as, as of when? 1876. That ain't in your history books. So they killed us. And that gave them the power that they still have. The South has run this country from Jump Street and it's still running it. Who comes to that now? What's the new question? In 1955, the South put together a program called Operation Dixie. The purpose of Operation Dixie was to compete for the vote of the, of the states of the Confederacy. And why was that significant? Because you, you go and run some turkey for president and you go and vote. Your vote doesn't mean squat, Jack. What means squat is the electoral college. 
another, an, another relic from, from the 7th, 18th century, the Electoral College. How many states are there? How many states are there? How many senators for each state? That's another, an, another uh, um, installed trick of the, yeah, thank you, <laughs> of the South. Regardless of population, whether you have nine million people in one state and three in another, no state gets more than two. This is all. The stuff the South has done, including the filibuster, this shit's centuries old. All this stuff is from the slave power. It's still in effect. Boom, electoral college. 50 states, 100. How many people in Congress? 435. Well, how many? 435. How many? 435. 435 and 100 is how many? Uh, what, how many votes do you need to become president of the United States? 270. 270. The 11 states of the Confederacy represent 60% of the votes necessary to elect the president of the United States. That was the Republican strategy. Mm. And, and then what did they do? They emphasized militarism, racism, anti-feminism, etc. And what is the consequence? Bad news. <laughs> the consequence is, which is another issue, the media is controlled by five corporations. So you will learn nothing from the American media. The success of the Republican strategy has meant, now listen carefully and think. Since 1964, when Lyndon Baines Johnson won the election, no Democratic presidential candidate has won a majority of the white vote for 50 years. Racism is the base of the Republican Party. And the Democrats, because they were afraid, because you cannot say racism. So what they tried to do was to appeal to women and were running to, get, to try and balance it off with the women's vote. But that ain't going to cause there are female members of the Ku Klux Klan, so that is stupid. That's stupid. They will not confront them. So what's the consequence? You now have five corporations that control the media. The Republicans control 11 of the 13 appeals courts. They control the Supreme Court. They've infiltrated the, gov gov the government agencies. What is to be done? Well, there is possibility. Obama won in 2008 with 39% of the white vote. He got 43% in 2012. What are the Republicans? The Republicans understand what they're doing. All this bullshit that you hear about voter fraud, all of, everything about keeping student debt. How can a party that is anti-union, that is anti-raising the minimum wage, that is anti-gun control, anti-everything under the sun, still be seen as legitimate? How is it possible? Because the Democrats will not confront them. And the media, of course, will not confront them. We need to confront them. We need to explain to the people exactly who the Republican Party is. Are you in a union? Boom. Are you for women's control of their reproductive rights? Boom. You want to raise the minimum wage? Boom. You want to get gun control? Boom. Because they are against everything. Your student debt, that's their gift to you. What is the student debt? It's one trillion dollars. And why do we have, why do we have all of this discussion about raising the debt limit? Why? Because America is now the greatest debt nation in the history of the world. We owe 16.3 trillion dollars. And why is that? It's because you pay more taxes than General Electric and Walmart. The corporations do not pay taxes. They do not ask the corporations to pay taxes, so therefore they must borrow money to keep the government alive. And who is our number one lender? It is China. And who is our number two lender? It is Britain. And what you also have not heard, Britain's economy, I almost said a bad word, I don't want to say the bad word. Britain's economy is fucked too. <laughs> uh, 
What happens, however, when, because now they're dealing with South Korea and, and get, going, getting into disputed seas, um, <clears throat> which China told them those, those are our islands, but now they're with South Korea, which is, the, which is the, our puppet government, and messing all this bullshit about North Korea. What happens when China says, we're no longer going to loan you money? What happens? So what happens now? We have two million homeless children in America. Is that in the media? I don't think so. You have 40, 40 million people who are on, in poverty, given their standards, and another 40 million who are almost in poverty. But here, we don't hear about that. All we hear about is how wonderful everything is and how sweet the 1% are. If, Obama was elected with a de facto rainbow coalition. Blacks, browns, Asians, and young, and young whites. That, that coalition needs to be made permanent. And it needs to take over the Democratic Party, just as the right wing is taking over the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Because the existing Democratic Party does not have, can, can I buy a spoiler like it? Can I buy it is no tennis cojones. <laughs> we need a party. We need a party that has cojones and that will tell that will tell the truth. And it must also attack the media. It must. I have a friend, a great, great writer who you never heard of. He wrote one of the great books in the '60s called *The Man Who Cried I Am*. His name is John A. Williams. And John said years ago. If television told the truth for a week, there'd be a revolution in this country. We must expose the media. We must expose the Republican Party. We must take over the Democratic Party. And we can do it. I think if you put forward a... If we put forward... You have, to, you have to explain to people what the problem is and then give them something that they can understand as manageable. You can put forward a 10-year plan. You're not going to be able to reverse all, this, you know, all of the infiltration they have done in the government agencies, in the EPA, in, in the F SEC, in the FCC, and whatever. But you must expose why these government agencies are not regulating squat. They are not regulating squat. Meanwhile, the situation gets worse and worse. The reefs keep dying. Global warming. Car carbon emissions keep increasing. And some of the scientists say, if we don't stop, it may not, it may possibly be too late to start the carbon emissions now. But unless there is movement on this question the day before yesterday, unless people understand the necessity to do it, you are talking about not what was said before about our children or our children's children. We're talking about the fate of the earth. And that who is the major force? Reagan once called the Soviet Union the evil empire. The name of the Soviet Union is the evil empire. And that's what Americans don't want to face. America is the evil empire. Everywhere you go, everywhere you look, there they are. Listening in, the question is, who is their agent in the audience tonight? <laughs> because one of the things we used to say in the movement is John will attest, the man is everywhere. Ain't that true, baby? Amen. <laughs> the man is everywhere. But you can't let that stop you. So, just pretend that you, you must study, um, read foreign newspapers. How many people watch Democracy Now? Oh, yes. Okay. Read the nation. Yes. Do your own analysis as to what's going on. Um, we, do, we, we have, can I have Espanol on the base? Can I have Francais? Speak the Deutsch? He might speak the Deutsch. Well, if you don't have, if you have German, you can read the Frankfurt. I'll be my desire to Or in French, you can read the Monde of Humanité. Even El Pais in reactionary Spain, read El Pais. If not, read the Guardian, read the British newspapers. 
do it for a semester and just look at how the, the news, how it is covered in the rest of the world and how it is covered or not covered here. How the headlines are different. How the emphases are different. If you do it for a semester, you will wake up and say some bad words about <laughs> how they are messing with you. So, assalamu alaikum. Well,